so till now we are all, uh, we're done with uh, setting up the environment okay we have seen how we can uh, start a browser with the code java code java and selenium code we have understood how maven works how to create a maven project in eclipse and how to add the dependency of selenium so once you are done with that then you have written a code which is going to open up a firefox browser that also we have already seen and some of you have already uh, seen how you are going to make changes so that the same code is going to run on google chrome right similarly you can do uh, some more changes you can create a new driver which is going to run on internet and internet explorer okay so anyways we are done uh, like we have created a firefox window by creating the object of uh, firefox driver or we have uh, we have always also seen uh, google chrome driver and till now we have never seen how we can navigate to a url but how we are going to uh, like click a particular element okay how to find an element within an entire web page how to perform some action on that so today we are going to basically discuss and sort things so you're going to see how we can find the element then we, we are going to perform some action so let's do one thing i'm going to go to eclipse <clears throat> in eclipse okay i'm going to create a new uh, project Okay, so I'm going to do the same way, new Maven project. <clears throat> so, skip archetype selection, com.example, uh, artifact is element, and it's sample.selection, element selection. Fine, now click on finish. The project will be created. You can see uh, element selection is there. And wait for some time. On the bottom, you can see building workspace. Once it is done, you can see the project is ready. So within that project, you can write the Java code that you want. Element selection. And we're going to focus mostly on source main Java because this is where we're going to write the code. In Maven, these are the four folders which are automatically created in Maven Eclipse. What it does, it creates the placeholder in which we can write the code, we can put our property or resource files, etc. And we are going to focus on this source main Java and we are going to create a new file, new Java class. It's new Java class. <clears throat> I am going to name it as element and locator locator example one fine click and finish constructor from super class is not needed we need a, we need a main method click on finish so the main method is automatically created by eclipse for us fine now the code i'm going to go back to the last project and copy the code that we have written because we're going to use certain parts like setting the environment variable creating the driver navigating to a url so till this much we need right so what I'm going to do, I'm going to write them over here. Fine, now I need to import the web driver. So, okay. See, now when I try to import the web driver, it is saying, one sec, I'll show you the message. It says that uh, five quick fixes are available. Web driver cannot be resolved to a type. And there are different options like create a class, interface, enum, etc, etc. But nowhere I can see how to import web driver. So what do you think? What is uh, something that we have missed? So that if, if we do that, we are going to get uh, that thing back, get the import statement back. On Firefox driver also, if I try, it is saying, okay, there is no Firefox driver import option. So can someone say me what we missed? Come on, think about it. This web driver is not available. So I cannot import that right so what might have been missed okay so i'm going to tell you uh, see web driver is a class or is an interface it's an interface and that interface is not defined in java okay that is not defined by the java jdk or the java libraries it is developed by selenium it's a third party jar but we need to tell our project that we are going to use a third party jar that's a selenium jar right so we need to add the dependency of selenium to maven pom.xml file that thing we have missed 
So I'm going to copy that dependency from the last form.xml that we have created and I'm going to paste that into current projects form.xml. So over here I can find the dependency, copy. In XML this uh, bracket, angular bracket, factorial, or exclamation, double hyphen, it means it's a comment and the comment ends over here. So in Java as we have already seen the comments, then never compile, they don't have any meaning. It's just for understanding of the developer. So if you want, you can copy this or you can keep it. Uh, you don't want to copy, you can keep it back. Okay, copy. Fine. <clears throat> then I'm going to paste it in current projects form.xml within the dependencies tag. Okay. So let's go into this and you can see there is no dependencies available. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create the dependencies over here or I can copy the entire part from dependencies to dependencies done copied and paste it format and see now my element selection problem uh, project it doesn't have access to selenium jars that is the reason I'm not able to import the web driver and the Firefox driver so what I'm going to do now I have already uh, pasted the contents over here but I have not saved it yet so now I'm going to save it and once I click on save, you can see on the bottom, it will start building the project. It will start downloading the project. In Maven, if a jar is required for the second time, first time when it is required, it is downloading the jar automatically from internet. But next time onwards, whenever we point to the same jar, Selenium Java and the same version, it is not going to download anything. So it is going to use the uh, jar files that were downloaded last time. So now the project is going to be built quickly. For the first time, it takes some time, but now I'm doing the, I need the same dependency, so it doesn't need to download anything else. So let's click on save. I can see building works with, so it doesn't need to download anything. It's already downloaded from the last class. So now <clears throat> that is done and you can see the web driver import is successful and we don't see any error. Fine. One more thing I wanted to say you over here, we have said that webdriver.geco.driver is located in my desktop okay there may be a chance when you want to migrate the project to a different system suppose you have system 1 and system 2 say for example you have an office laptop and your personal laptop so if you put this file in a, in a different directory then we need to write the entire path where this file is located gcodriver.exe or gcodriver we need to give the proper path but when i switch back from laptop 1 to laptop 2, this location changes. So I need to copy this file to a different location. To solve this problem, what I can do, I can remove this part. So it says that this Geekko driver is located just within the project. So what we need to do, we need to copy the Geekko driver within this element selection project. So we need to copy and paste within this folder. Right? So I'm going to go back to my desktop and copy that eco driver file this is the file i'm going to copy it right click copy it's not that sir okay copy is that fine copy eco driver and i'm going to go back and right click paste over here <clears throat> you can see the eco driver is over here fine so when i say just the name of the executable file java what it will do it will automatically search its own project location so it will try to find the file within its own project root folder. So we have found the Geekko driver. If this file is not present in this location, if you are keeping it somewhere else, then we need to give the path, complete path. In, C, in uh, Windows, we need to give C colon slash or D colon slash in whatever folder within that, uh, like where we have kept, we need to give the complete path. <clears throat> so now the benefit that we are going to get, even if we copy and paste the entire project in a new system, we don't need to change any code. The Geekko driver is still within this project's home. Fine, so let's save it and let's see if it is navigating to Selenium HQ or not. So after navigating to this URL, I just want to sleep for a second, create the, I just want to wait in that page for a time. So for example, 3 seconds. Done. Now I need to throw this exception. This is a compile time exception. Okay, now I have clicked on throws. So that is gone. After that, I am going to quit the driver. Driver dot quit. Okay, fine. So now the uh, Java class is ready. So at least we are in a position in which the last class, whatever you have learned, 
that is done automatically. So it is going to load the driver and it is going to start a Firefox window. Because we are creating the instance, we are creating the object of new Firefox driver. Right now, we're navigating to this URL that is selenemhq.org over here, and then waiting for three seconds, and then we're quitting the browser. So let's run this code. Right click, run as as it's a main method. We'll get this Java application. Click on that. So let's look at the console, and let's see when this Firefox is going to be open. Okay, we faced some error. Okay, let's look at the error. It says that the driver is not executable. Okay, this uh, error used to come in some of the systems, not in uh, most of the systems, because what it says that it has located the Gigo driver, right? It has seen where this driver is. It has printed the entire path. The problem is this Gigo driver path, this Gigo driver executable file, is not accessible directly, or it is accessible, but it doesn't have a permission which says that your operating system can run this file. So what we are going to do, we are going to right click on this file. You may not find these things on your windows systems. Right click, go to pro uh, properties, over here you can see the attributes locked. Right? Okay. See the properties, this is a Linux or Unix environment related property. You might not, might not find these properties in windows. So when you see such a thing, just right click and click on properties of the file and try to uh, like click on execute, try to give this execute permission. So other users or any other within the same group or the same user can at least execute the code. I don't need these two options because I just have one user. So I'm going to give owner, I'm going to give this owner the execution permission. Either you can do this from Eclipse or you can go back to your system and go to that particular file then you can right click on that and go to properties in uh, Mac I have yet info over here we have sharing and permissions and here it is read and write permission which uh, like I used to already have for the last file but the new file that I have copied didn't have that permission now it's done let's click on ok and when you right click and go to properties again you'll have this permission already like execute permission is there fine so now let's run the code again now the code is, uh, this Gecko driver file is uh, something which can be executed. Click on Java. Now, see it has started. Now a new Firefox is getting open. Right, it has opened up a new Firefox window. And you can see it is going to wait for 3 seconds. Once the page is loaded, it is waiting for 3, 2, 1. Go. Driver.quit has happened. Fine. Now the code has successfully executed and now in the end I have quit the driver, right? So irrespective of anything that you write, so like anything may go wrong within the project, right? The driver is created, the window is open and something goes wrong. In those cases, the driver is not automatically quit. So we need to execute this line of code even if the code fails with it. So if you remember the exception class, which we have already discussed in Java classes, which said that if you put something within the try catch block, the try catch block in try, if anything goes wrong, an exception is generated, right? And that specific exception can be handled within the catch block. And the finally block is there, which is, which is executed irrespective of the exception that is thrown or even if the code is compiled or run properly, then also the finally block is executed. What I want is I need the driver, the Firefox window to be closed at the end, irrespective of any problem. So I can have a finally block and I can put them over there and rest of the things can go within a try block. So let's do that. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to create a try block. Within this try, I'm going to put all my logic and I know this logic may fail and in those cases, the Firefox window might not close. I'm going to handle the exceptions that I want. Right now, I don't have any exception in mind. So I'm handling all the exceptions. Exception E, then it is going to print the information. The like error stack trace or whatever we have. Done. Now I try to call driver.quit, but it says this variable is not defined, right? Because this driver variable is not defined cannot be resolved but if you look on the top we have already defined it 
the scope of this variable is within these two blocks so we need to make this scope which is going to be available over here the scope is not available that's the reason so i'm going to copy this part and i'm going to assign now initially then i'm going to create the driver over here and i'm going to execute my business logic or whatever logic i have if anything goes wrong it will come to the catch block and at the end it is going to execute the finally and in the finally i have the driver to do it suppose this driver is still null the driver doesn't like while creating this new firefox driver it failed the driver is still null but i'm trying to create a uh, call a method quit method on this driver so i may get some error so i need to check if the driver is not null driver is not null then only try to quit the driver okay I'm going to move this line inside. Fine, it's done. Now let's run the code again and let's see whatever code we have added, it is working properly or not. Run us in Java application. Okay, Firefox window is open and it is going to navigate to Selenium HQ. Fine, it is navigating. Fine, it is done. Now it is waiting for three seconds and in the end, it goes in the finally block and check the driver is not null then only just quit the driver fine so let's go to the next part in which i'm going to find some elements within the browser so if you remember the class when we discussed about the firefox id those time also we needed to find the element right in those times we also needed to find the elements so i'm going to use the same strategies that we have already seen like using the id using the class name using the name xpath etc so there are lots of ways to find or locate an element so i'm going to use some ui locators for that i'm going to open up firefox within firefox i have a plugin called as firebug over here you can see this is called as firebug so this firebug is going to help us locate the elements within the web page so if you don't have firebug go to firefox then go to google and when within google try to search for firebug f-i-r-e-b-u-g then try to download that plugin and install it so i'm going to go to selenium hq.org so i'm at selenium hq then suppose, I yes. go back to the screen. which screen i mean the, the code yes so, uh, can you go talk okay so here you mentioned that web driver driver equal to null perfect so oh, i mean i, I have uh, confusion on this why we are mentioning null okay it's just to display that this driver can be null when we are at finally by default if you don't assign any value the driver is still null right the object which we create if you don't assign any value by default it is null but suppose uh, it's just a way of writing the code because over here somebody might be confused what is the value of driver because the driver can have some value it may be a firefox driver it may be chrome driver or some other value might have been assigned in between but when we say that the, this driver equals to null specifically then there is a chance that the driver will be null like when we write the code we need to handle this null check condition no no that i understood but driver equal to null means i mean <coughs> literally i don't understand driver equals to null means this driver it doesn't contain a reference to any object in memory okay so if we say integer x equal to 10 that means x is a reference to a value in memory that value is 10 and x is basically referring to that value or x is pointing to that value right now when i said driver web driver driver equals to null that means this driver is assigned a reference or that's a null reference null reference as in it is not present within memory that there is no data existing in memory which this driver is pointing later on what i did i created a new object new firefox driver and I assign that value to driver. 
Understood? Over here, the driver is pointing to nothing. The driver is pointing to a null reference. And over here, the driver is pointing to an object, to an object which is created over here. New Firefox driver. That's an object which is created, right? And that object's reference is saved within this driver. Okay. Understood? So this is just to make sure that after this much line of code, the driver reference is available. So if you assign some value over here, even if this block is complete, we still have access to that driver reference. That's the reason I have brought this driver ahead, like above this prime block. So instead of null, I can put any values there? You cannot put. See, if you are creating string s equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, it is going to give you compilation error because 1, 2, 3, 4 is not a string. You need to put them within double quotes. Right? Correct. If you are creating a new student object, student s1 equal to new student is going to work. Student s1 equal to new teacher is not going to work because they are incompatible objects. Suppose I want to write any other value, it's not going to accept because this is not a driver reference. Okay, this is not a web driver thing. But this new Firefox is actually a web driver. So I can assign only the object of this type. It is an interface. So all the classes which are implementing this interface, their object can be referred by this driver instance. Over here, I'm trying to assign an integer value. So it is not acceptable. Understood? Okay. If you don't want, we can remove this just like this. It's just creating a variable okay now later on what i have done i have created i have assigned the value to the uh, variable okay over here the firefox window it gets populated fine hope uh, this is clear so we're going to go uh, back to our code uh, so now what if, if you look at the code what I'm doing in the first place, I'm opening a browser. It may be a Firefox browser or a Chrome browser or whatever. Once I have opened up the browser, then I'm going to do some action in the browser. What I have done till now, I have navigated to a URL. Okay, over here, I have navigated to a URL, right? So I'm in this place. Okay, now I'm in this place. What I want next is, I want to click on this documentation icon. So this is a URL, this is a uh, anchor element. Okay, within this web page, we have one uh, link. This is documentation link, if you look at this. If you click on this, it is going to navigate to a different page, right? So what I want to do is, after opening this browser and after entering the URL of selenmsq.org, I'm in this page. And I want to click, I want to go to documentation page. So what I need, I need to find this documentation element. For that, I'm going to take the help of Firebug. So let's do one thing. Let's right click on documentation and click on this inspect elementing with Firebug. Click on that. Now you can see the Firebug window is open. This is the Firebug window which is going to help us to locate that element okay so what I'm going to do now this element is located now when I have the mouse on this you can see the documentation part is blinking so over here the documentation part is there fine now this is one element this is an anchor element angular bracket a href equal to something title equal to something etc and this is the display text that I can see this documentation is basically displayed on the UI. So there is a, a locator in Selenium which you can use. As I have already told you in the first class or in some of the demo classes, Selenium is having lots and lots of libraries and lots of methods and utilities to help us perform some action on the browser or find some element on the browser and do some sort of task. Right now, what task do I have? I need to find one element and click on that. To find the element from within the browser, I'm going to refer, I'm going to use which reference? I'm going to use the reference of the driver that I just created. 
So over here I have created the driver, this is the driver. So I'm going to use this reference to find that element from the browser and then I'll use the same reference to click on something. So let's do one thing, let's copy this reference and over here after waiting three seconds, what I'm going to do, I'm going to find the element. So driver dot find element is the method that we're going to use. Driver dot find element. So this is going to find the element for us. The document is an element. Now how am I going to find the element? To do that, we need to use Firebug. And in Firebug, we have different ways of finding the element. Okay, so let me show you in Firebug. Okay, one second. Fine. This is the base, and within that, I need the documentation link. So when I right clicked and clicked on inspect element with Firebug, it has pointed this one. So I'm going to search for some of the specific parts within this HTML code which is going to help me locate that element. So within this entire HTML code, there are lots and lots of things available. But this specific UI element is having something which is very unique, which others may not be having. That is this text, documentation text. Okay. So we need to find that element using this text. Right. So there is a method in Selenium that we are going to use to find that element. And that method is called driver.findElement. In this find element, we are going to ask Selenium to find that element using the text that is displayed. So this is by dot id, by dot not id, by dot display text, link text, okay. This method is available which says that if the link text is this, then find that element. So we're going to call which link text. This is the link text documentation. This is the link text. Copy this one. And let's paste it over here. Now this statement when executed on this phase, it is going to go to the source code and search for all the link, link text as in all the links it is going to search and find that link element which is having this text documentation. So within this page there are many links present. Edit, this is a link. Okay, it goes to this URL which is displayed on below and this project is a link. There are lots of links available in the page. Even there are a lot more links over here. Lots and lots of links over here. But this link is very unique. It is having the text documentation. Right? It is having the text documentation. So we are going to use by.link text documentation. Now this find element will return us back another object. So if you put a mouse on find element, it is saying it is returning web element. So basically Selenium is telling us that this documentation is going to be converted to a web element. And we need to take, like we need to take that reference and then we need to perform the action that we want. So I'm going to create a web element reference and I'm going to call this is a documentation element. Or you can give any name if you, whichever you want. This is a link. I'm going to call it documentation link. So what I've done over here, I have used the driver reference. And this driver reference, it points or it resembles the browser that is already open. And I'm trying to I'm trying to find the element. Within this page, I'm specifically finding an element. This is the element. And I'm using the method by.link text method to find the element using the link text property or using the link text functionality. It is going to find all the links and it is going to sort. No, sorry, it is going to search for a specific link which is having the text as documentation now i have found the element over here you can see there is this error it is basically the import error because till now we have not used web element so if you put a mouse on that it is going to call uh, it is going to say you import web element from selenium hq ok 
okay uh, sorry open qa dot selenium this is the package from which you need to import the web element done now that import is done the error is gone what we need to do next once we have found the element then we need to perform some action on the element see there are many elements present this is a text box we can write some task that means we are basically writing something this is a link or this is a link i can click on that so basically this is a click event right so we are going to call the click event on that link which link we need to call click this is the link copy paste there is a method called click we have performed the click action now this is the action which is performed on the element that we have found now i have performed the click uh, click operation so what is going to happen the page is going to open it sorry the uh, browser is going to open first it is navigating to this url waiting for three seconds then it is finding this element and then clicking on that so we should be displayed this page after this thing is done after clicking is done so let's try this so after that let's wait for another uh, maybe two seconds then we are done here you can see the driver is not equals to null this is an error so it says that the driver cannot be equated with other properties if we have not initialized it so the variable driver may not have been initialized so it says that initialize this variable so it is going to initialize with null value so now we have this driver equal to null which is the first step like we are initializing the driver variable with null reference so that we can start comparing this reference with other references or other values later on i have tried to create a new firefox window and update this driver reference with the new window that i have created now i am performing the action on that driver object so i am navigating to a url then i am finding an element using driver and i am clicking on that element so all these actions are performed just by finding just by using the driver reference at the end i want irrespective of any exceptions that has come or if there is no exception irrespective of that i want the window to be closed after my code is complete i want the window to be closed firefox window to be closed properly so in the finally block i have put driver dot quit but i need to check if this driver is still null or not if the driver is not null that means the driver is uh, like is pointing to a firefox browser in the system so let's run the code and let's see how this element finding is done and how the click operation is affecting our code so right click run as java application <clears throat> so it has opened the firefox for us now it has navigated to selenium hq then it is going to wait for three seconds done then it has found the driver documentation link and clicked on that again it is going to wait for two seconds and quit the driver that it has created so if you look at the code now it has successfully executed everything and here we are the code is complete so i have just told you one strategy how we can find the element there are many ways many strategies to find the element so i'm going to discuss each one of them one by one till now we have seen how we can find the element using the link text property so when i have found this documentation link i have used right click and inspect in firefox sorry inspect element in firebug and i have seen that this is the link text documentation and i have taken that link text similarly i want to search something within this selenium so basically i'm going to find this text box this is again another web element what i need to do i need to find the location of this element so how i have done for documentation the same thing i'm going to do right click on that and click inspect element with firebug so when i did that you can see there is a change in this firebug over here it is displaying the input tag we need to look closely at the html code we need to understand what this code is this code is input input as in it's a text box type is text box you can see this type is text when we say input it's a web element or it's a form element within the web page and the type is text that means it's a text box we can write something within that 
then there are different other properties as well right so these properties are nothing but a key and value pair it's a key and it's a value pair so there are a lot of lots and lots of properties all of these are available in html okay now what i need is i need to find this input tag within this thousand lines of html code i am trying to find this element so that i can search for something i can type something and they can then i can search for some value to do that you need to look at the property you need to look at the attributes like id name class etc so now we have the id property as q or name property as q so we're going to use this id q in our code and we are going to see if this element is like available or not using this id q and if it is available i am going to get a web element reference and within that web element reference i am going to type something i want to search for something so i am going to type something so how to do that so i, ha I have understood that this element is defined by id equal to q so i am going to write the same thing in my code so over here after waiting for 2 seconds i am going to find the search box so search box is a web element search box equals to driver dot find element by dot last time i have used display text link text now i am going to use id by dot id so in this i am going to provide the id of that element that is q now i have found the element within search box reference and what i need next is i need to perform an action that is called as send keys i want to type something earlier i have done click event now there is this event which is called send keys send keys okay when we uh, give send keys now we can pass some data over here selenium grids for example now what i have done i have found the element search box element using driver dot find element method but this time i have searched this element by using its id value that is q within the code we have seen within the firebox code we have seen this element text element is located it can be located using the id property that is id attribute value that is q so i have found the element next thing is that i am going to send some value send some data or i need to write something in that text box so i am going to call the method send keys and this is the text which is going to be automatically filled within this so it is going to have selenium grid then the next thing is i need to click on go right so i need to find this element then i can perform the clean click operation to find it there is one more way we have done already using right click and inspect with firebug now i'm going to tell you the different way you can we can basically click on this icon and then we can navigate to the entire page and we are going to click on the element that we want to find so i want to find this go element so put your mouse on that and click now you can see the code is over here so this is again another input type like we have already seen with q this is another input type which is having the value go and type it submit id is also submit so all we need is the id so i'm going to copy this part and then i'm going to search for that web element okay so how to do that we have already done so we're going to create another web element and i'm going to call it go button equals to new no driver dot find element by dot id and over here i am going to pass that id submit okay in the code you can see this is input submit type and it is having this id equal to submit so i have used driver dot find element by dot id submit so it is going to find the entire page and find the specific element which is having the id submit now i have the data now i have i have a connection or i have a, a way of accessing that go button this go button i have kept the reference then i am going to perform some action on that reference so that is the go button dot click 
So what I'm doing after type, typing some value, I'm clicking on go. So this thing should be executed for us. So I'm going to give some wait. So I'm two, two seconds. Done. Now we are going to run the code. Right click, run as Java application. It has navigated to the first home URL. Then it is going to click on documentation. Yes, it has clicked on documentation. And it's going to wait for some time. Two seconds. After two seconds, it is going to find the text box. Okay, and that is by.idq. After finding that element, it is going to type the text for us. Okay, the net is slow, so it is taking so much time to load the page. You can see this icon which is moving. So once it stops, then it is said that the, that line of code is executed. Then it has clicked on this element. Mm -hmm. One second. Let me complete this. See, we have done the operation. We have entered the text selenium grid and clicked on go. Now this is the next page which is displayed. Okay, I'll get back to you the message page. Just wait for a second. Let this complete, then I'll discuss. So it has entered the text by finding this element. It has sent selenium grid. And then it has found the element submit element then it has performed the click operation if you want to see what is like how it is entered within the page then you can have a thread dot sleep say for example three seconds so this page is still loading in uh, selenium there is this default weight which is already there it's for some 30 to 60 seconds i don't recall once that time is complete and if the page is not loaded properly then it will throw some error now this page is taking a lot of time to load and see it is trying to find the element once the timeout is gone then it is going to throw some error It's taking a long time. Let's stop this and run it again. Okay, let's run the code again. Right click, run as Java application. And you can have focus on this over here once it is in the documentation page then it is going to find this element yes it has found and it has entered the text and it is going to click on go it is already clicked now it's in the next page the completion yes the execution is complete fine now i'm coming to your question so you said what is going to happen basically what happens when we uh, when we look at the basic flow of execution the window the firefox window that is open is basically a window it seems like a window it seems like some sort of object or some sort of 
a software to the system to the operating system but when we want to deal with that window when we want to go to a url when we want to find an element or when we want to do anything in that window then we have this reference driver for the java code entire selenium code we know this driver okay so once we say driver dot get url so it is basically saying our selenium browse uh, our firefox window that you need to navigate to this url right so when this line is executed it is basically trying to navigate to selenium hq.org unless the entire page is loaded properly this is going to wait over here it's not going to execute three seconds wait first it will try to load the page selenium hq.org completely then it is going to execute three seconds sleep. okay suppose this page loads at about in like five seconds so this line is executed instantly because it's just a string of the JSON. Then it is going to navigate to selenumsq.org. So this line will be taking 5 seconds to complete. So the flow will wait here for 5 seconds. Now the page is loaded properly. Then it will try to execute this line. So over here when we reach over here, then almost 8 seconds have been passed. Okay, so once the page is completely loaded, it has slept for 3 seconds. Then it is finding this element. Okay, then I'm clicking on that element. That means it is navigating to a different page now. That page needs to load. So it is waiting for that much seconds for that documentation page to be loaded. Once that is done, then it will try to execute two seconds here. Similarly, over here, it is trying to send the keys, but it doesn't take much time. So it is complete uh, instantly. Uh, then we are waiting, just waiting three seconds. Then I'm finding the submit button. And I'm performing a click operation, click operation. So it is not going to do click and wait two seconds. Rather, after clicking on that button, it is navigating to a different page. So it will wait for that page to be loaded properly. Then it is going to execute this two seconds slave. In the end, it is going to check if driver is not null. Yes, that is it is not null because we have tried to, to assign a value. Driver is assigned a value, this one. So driver is basically a Firefox window for us. What we are going to tell, we are going to call him, uh, we are going to tell that browser to quit. So this is how basically the flow is and uh, thread.sleep is never executed instantly. Before that, it needs to have the page to be loaded properly or the driver method needs to complete. Then only the next line of code is executed. So finding the element, it will seem somehow difficult. But always remember this is the syntax to find the element and over here we have many ways to find the element. I am using by.link text and I am using by.id two times. Right. So any doubt 